Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Wednesday, June 7th, around 5 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. Kilauea Volcano began erupting once again around slightly after 4 a.m. local time in Hawaii. But the big story, smoke and more smoke. New York City's air pollution among the world's worst as Canada wildfire smoke shrouds the Northeast. Keep calm. It's boom time. El Nino is now developing rapidly with long-range data already showing a strong event is likely impacting the fall and winter weather patterns. And that's not good news for Quebec because there's no precipitation coming in the coming weeks to put out those fires. Here's the official NOAA PCP ENSO probabilities. And you can see beginning now, June, through the rest of the year, solid El Nino over 80 and 90% predicted as we move forward. Spotty thunderstorms with the potential in Omaha area on Wednesday with a small risk for large hail, so heads up there. And let's get back to the smoke, Canadian wildfire smoke. We will link you below to some live updates and air quality alerts have been issued for 13 states. Hazy and dangerous fumes from ongoing Canadian wildfires have engulfed the skies over most of the Northeast Coast, prompting serious air quality alerts for millions of Americans. Here you can see not so smart people jogging and exercising in these conditions. That is the last thing you want to do. As of Wednesday morning, 13 states have issued those alerts as thick fumes have blocked the sky and sent people indoors to avoid breathing in the polluted air. We're going to get to the map in just a moment. It's true. New York City had some of the worst air pollution yesterday and today may be coming in first or second once again. As Canadian wildfire smoke shrouds the Northeast, take a look at this picture. New York City topped the list of the world's worst air pollution on Tuesday and may be doing the same today. Here we can see some satellite images of that smoke being pushed with this Alberta clipper straight down into the Northeast. And here is the two-day smoke forecast. We'll bring it back. Here is today. And you can see that smoke is not going away anytime soon. And in fact, by Wednesday, a huge plume is going to be moving down into the Cleveland area, Western PA. So heads up, it's only going to get worse in some of the major cities. And now the worst smoke is going to be in near Pittsburgh, Rochester, Buffalo by tomorrow. So heads up in those regions. Stay indoors if you can. Smoky conditions and air quality alerts across the eastern U.S. An upper level low is directing a plume of smoke from Canadian wildfires south and across the east, including urban areas along I-95. Elevated to critical fire weather conditions can be expected from the Great Lakes to the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast with locally heavy rain and showers, including thunderstorms, isolated, severe may develop across the plains as well and in the Northwest and Southeast. So heads up. It's looking like a minor threat as far as severe weather, but the winds are the big winner, chicken dinner. And take a look at what's showing up on the GFS model here towards the third week of June, a tropical system showing up as Cat 5 making landfall in Texas. This is a very early model, way out there, weeks out, but it is showing Cat 5 status making landfall on Friday, June 23rd. So we're going to be keeping a close eye on this tropical system as it has popped up on the GFS model consistently now for several days. So heads up, we could have some tropical activity moving into the Gulf, also affecting Cuba there as a very strong hurricane later in June. Now, as far as putting out the fires up in Quebec, there's not a lot of precipitation. This is the region the fires are in, which is that little white hole up there. Maybe some precipitation coming in the 18th, which is about 11 days from now. That's not good news. It's going to give chance for those fires to spread. So our thoughts and prayers go out to the people affected all through the Northeast and as well as up into Quebec. Seismic update, no quakes of note. We do have some elevated activity in Hawaii. That's to be expected as Kilauea is re-erupting. And Kilauea, there's red lava all over the floor. USGS 
said that a glow was seen in the Kilauea summit Wednesday morning at 4.47 a.m., indicating that the volcano was once again erupting. The activity is within the Halamamaua crater, according to the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, where fissures were observed on the base of the crater floor erupting. And we're here over here live at one of our favorite channels that covers the live eruption here at Kilauea, Two Pineapples where they have all the data, and it appears to be they're doing some podcasting. I've never seen this. What's he Those saying? things need to be done. Yeah. So check out Two Pineapples. Tell them Diamond sent you. And if you want to monitor the activity here at the Summit Caldera at Kilauea, it is re-erupting as of 4.47 a.m. So thumbs up, subscribe to Two Pineapples, and let's spread the love. Scientists put out a warning amid volcano concerns. Uh, this is in the Philippines, and it is Mayan Volcano. It has been risen to alert level 2 by the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology. This level means that there is unrest that could eventually lead to an underwater or magmatic eruption. And Mayan is a nice, pointy uh, stratovolcano that is quite active and has erupted in recent history to VEI-3. The last VEI-3 was 2001. There was a VEI-3 back in 1984 that was quite deadly, and a VEI-3 in 1968. So we're long overdue for a VEI-3 here at Mayon. So cross your fingers that people get out of harm's way. Worldwide Volcano News Update, not much going on other than Kilauea and my own Popo to 21,000 feet. The alert level has been dropped on Popo, which is good news. Krakatau continues to puff and pass at just a few hundred feet here. But there are some people calling for another large eruption coming from Krakatoa soon, as Kilauea continues to erupt in spectacular fashion. Now, a quick look at space weather news. We did have an M4.5 solar flare about 12 hours ago, followed by a high-level C flare. These are all coming from uh, active region 3327. There it is, which has gone beta, gamma, delta, and now has a 5% chance of X flare, 20% chance of M flare. Not a lot of highly established sunspots like 3321, but this is in fact where the flaring is coming from. Now, an interesting overlay here. This is the Carrington event sunspot overlaid over AR3323. So you can get an idea of how big of a sunspot the Carrington event solar storm came from. Quite a bit different. What say you? Leave a comment below. Now, the U.S. is urged to reveal UFO evidence after claim that it has intact alien vehicles. A whistleblower, former intelligence official, says the government possesses intact and partially intact craft of non-human origin. A lot of people are saying they've heard this before, but the main, what we do know about the mainstream media is that they are never telling the truth. Now, we will be telling the truth this Friday after we interview Valentina Zarkova about the Grand Solar Minimum. And more importantly, the connection of terrestrial volcanic eruptions and their link with solar activity. We'll link the paper below. And that interview will go up Friday night on this channel. And that is a boom to knowledge. Hope you got something out of the video. Please share the video as we are shadow banned and we need your help to grow, become a Patreon, support the work we do. We love you. Be safe. And that is a boom. Lunu.